The year is 1969. The anti-war movement is in full swing. Don't squeeze the Sherman. I have a dream today. Go, everyone! Go, Vietnam! The Mets win the World Series. Sesame Street makes its debut on television. Neil Armstrong sets foot on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And East Windsor Volunteer Fire Company Number One makes its debut. We had we had a fire an off firehouse uh, where the where the old where the car wash is. That was our firehouse. He also happened to own the trailer park, and he had a Quonset hunt in the trailer park. The first three fire trucks, I believe, were all used. Our president and uh, two other members literally mortgaged their houses for the purchase of the first used fire truck. Lots of memories in 40 years. Do you remember? Using this shovel, ground was broken for the current headquarters on One Mile Road with a move-in date of 1972. The alarm bell, it still works. The first blackboard is still being used. The first sign is still hanging. A siren casing dented by a champagne bottle during a fire truck christening. Firefighters past and present still in our hearts. Firefighters on the front line still in our prayers. And enormous pride very much evident. In the beginning you had a lot of people that sacrificed a lot to, to get the organization running and the people that have came through the years after that ha have done nothing less than, than everything that they could to keep it such a success that it's been. Um, every year we've developed more and grown more and, and you know trained more, got more expertise brought in better equipment, better protection for the people. And you know what? Every chief officer and administrative group that's come through has always made sure that East Windsor One has the stuff that we need to do, the job that we need to do whenever we need to do it. Members of East Windsor Fire Company Number One, identified by Mercer County as Station 42, are just like any other firefighters in the U.S specially trained to deal with whatever is thrown at them. The most challenging, I would say, is the continuous training that we have to do nowadays. Uh, training is more stepped up uh, than it ever has been, um, I would say, in the last 10 or 15 years, um, <clears throat> due to a lot of things. The fire service has grown. Uh, the type of services that we provide have, has grown. Um, and you have to constantly keep up on the training. Firefighter safety has become a big, big thing. You got to know that you're trying to keep your guys safe, and you know that's the, the the most paramount thing about it is you know protect the property, but keep your people safe. And there's a lot of things going on that uh, there's no training for. And you just find out that first time. You find out when it happens. Just got to be ready for it. Some things you won't be prepared for until it actually happens. There's just, there's just no way to train for every single situation that could happen in something like that just not possible. Fire schools do a great job of putting the, the classes in front of us uh, for the things that we need such as classes on weapons of mass destruction and those type of things that allow us to to take those courses and get uh, educated on them so that when we're in the field we're able to conduct ourselves in a manner that we can handle the situation and if the manner is too big to handle there's always special groups that we can call like special hazardous materials units that can come out and assist us with the call. In the early 80s, it was the hazmat. In the 90s, it was, you know, now it was, you know, terrorism. You know, who knows what the next thing is going to be. You look at, you know, 9-11. I spent, you know, 10 days down at ground zero. You, you can't, cannot be prepared. We try and prepare for everything, but, you know, we, we try and we train, uh, but sometimes it's impossible. Nobody would have ever saw that coming, not on our own country, not on our own ground, but it happened. So we had to go down there and deal with it. Just like when we go to a fire, you know, whether it's a hazmat, whether it's a car accident, whether someone's trapped in a vehicle, you know, we just go there and that's why we have to be on our game 
and we have to continue to train. Over four decades, they have responded to and fought all kinds of fires in all kinds of weather at all hours. From fortunately, not too often, life-threatening structure fires to blazes involving careless cooking, errant barbecue grills, car fires, auto rescues, and elevator rescues. Even if a battery in a homeowner's smoke detector has gone bad for CO2 detector activations. For instance, when we go to a CO alarm at an elderly couple's home, quite often uh, they're nervous, they don't, their alarm went off, they don't know why, they're scared. <clears throat> we go in, we find out it's something simple like a bad battery. They can put their head on a pillow at night and be able to rest. And I kind of see my, my, my parents who are elderly in, in, in those people as well, and it gives me a good feeling to know that I help people just like them. Yeah, when uh, there's a big fire, then they call canteen, and we'll come out and we'll serve them uh, with water, with um, drinks, uh, with food, uh, if necessary, depending on how long the fire is. Their firefighting efforts also on occasion take them out of town on mutual aid. Recently to Cranberry for a structure fire and with no hydrants set up a tanker relay for precious water. In West Windsor, joining forces there to fight a massive house fire. He's going to call the second line, they're going to set up the second line, and then the second line will come in. Yep. Come in, two interior. And when they're not fighting real life blazes, they're practicing with training exercises with nonetheless dangerous heat and smoke at the fire academy. You're going to run out of air, you're going to get a low cylinder alarm. That's when you evacuate, right? Unfortunately, you guys are literally two to three feet from that back door. I had the dummy literally right by the back door. I thought you. I, I, That's where it started getting a little confusing down there. I watched this happen. Call uh, fire die, come in. Take them down to the building. Oh. That thing is heavy. Everybody kind of understood, but he didn't 100% understand that he was losing <laughs> two guys. Right. All right. That's something you always got to be cognizant of because nobody does. I wasn't even himself. sure you made it down. But you're faced with that in a real world scenario. But ask any of them. No two fires are the same. And never does it become routine or commonplace, no matter what the call. Firefighting is dangerous, the most dangerous occupation there is. And it takes a special breed to keep doing it. And it's hardly for the pay. There are plenty of things that we do that we don't get paid for in this world, but it still makes it worth it. Uh, and I think we, we manage the danger very well by, uh, by drilling, by being very safety conscious, uh, and being smart about what we do. My grandfather died at a fire. He was a captain in Binghamton, New York. And my mother was very, very leery when I said to her I wanted to be a fireman. And uh, ever since that point, I have never stopped wanting to be a fireman. I recommend it to a lot of people, but because it's rewarding and you're able to help your fellow man and it's just self-satisfying when you do something good. I started when I was 16 because I saw my, my father and my brother doing it and it looked interesting and I thought I would like to do it also and it turned out to be a very good passion. I've also turned it into my career on top of doing it 26 plus years as a volunteer. I've been doing it 20 plus years for a career. Well, I joined the department because uh as a lot of other members know, my dad was very involved here. And, uh, you know, while I was a kid growing up, and uh, I was, we always looked up to him as, uh, you know, that's the thing we respected a lot about him. So after I had my kids and uh, decided we were going to stay in town, 
I figured I'd join the department to try to lead by example and, you know, leave something behind for my kids. Because uh, we didn't really remember people for what they do at work and stuff like that, but more for how they help people and what they can contribute. Volunteering here provides me just the thrill and, and accomplishment that I probably don't get in my normal uh, daily job. Uh, it's a, a fantastic brotherhood we have here that we, that, uh, we work together. And I truly enjoy that and it's uh, just a, an exciting, fun thing to do. But there is certainly an adrenaline rush. Anyone that uh, would tell you not is a liar. You think safety, you think what you have to do and um, that's what we practice for and uh, just trying to uh, help the community. Even though you do do safe practices, there are still opportunities where something's going to happen to you, so uh, you kind of put your faith in God that he'll protect you uh, at times like that. Also, you put your faith in your fellow firefighters, uh, knowing that if something does happen to you, um, they will be there to help you and get you out of any kind of problems. By helping others in need, you know, in any way we can. A sense of doing something for the community you know, that's about the only thing I can say. I mean, he's been uh, living in this area since he was born, you know, and, and I live here since uh, we were married. Uh, and it's just something that he wants to do, and I encourage him in doing it. And, uh, you, know, you know, he's away from home, and he has a lot of different things that he has to do with the fire company, but I know it's for a good cause. Why do I do it? Because I'm Daddy. someone who can. Daddy. Not everybody can do this Daddy. job. Not everybody wants to do this job. I can do this job and I like doing this job. I don't think anybody can really explain why they do something that's dangerous, that's life-threatening to your individual. I think it's just something you, you just grow into and you want to be part of something that's a whole new way of life. It's different. It's not your normal everyday uh, go to work, come home, join community activities. This is different. It's a comradeship that uh, you can't find anywhere else in any other kind of uh, volunteer position or community service. I get a lot of satisfaction, but uh, I do it because I enjoy doing it. Aside from being a closet adrenaline junkie, um, it, it is a good thing to do. Um, my uh, dad was in, in public service. He was a patrolman in uh, Newark, and uh, I didn't necessarily want to do that. Um, considered uh, you know joining the fire department and uh, made a call down here and uh, Kevin Brink uh, actually talked me into it and uh, I haven't looked back since. I do it because it makes me feel good to know that I can help people that I have some area of expertise that helps them solve a problem in a situation where they they have very little knowledge of what to do and how to handle and that we can go there and straighten it out for them and make them feel good and allow them to have peace of mind and I think that's uh, that's the most rewarding thing that we do and it's uh, it's important important to job to be doing and I think uh, we do it very well. Interior to come in. Proceed. Yeah, it's going to be careless cooking. Activated the fire alarm. Uh, we're doing a quick check with the thermal camera but not seeing anything. Some fire calls aren't worth getting out of bed for in the middle of the night. False alarms, defective heat and smoke detectors. But you have to get in those big red trucks and go anyway, because, again, you never know. And then, of course, a volunteer organization needs money, and that's accomplished by knocking on doors. It's also here to help prevent fires. So they take their new fire safety trailer to National Night Out and local shopping malls to teach everybody what to do just in case of fire. I like spending time with him. Take out fires and help people. Um, he can rescue people and he can take out fires. People. It's cool and he saves lives. I like him backing up the fire truck. Um, like putting out fires. Um, pick up fire and he makes the fire truck go turn on and it makes loud noises. He helps them and he also gets them out of the fire. 
it gives me like inspiration to know that like if there's ever a fire that he'll be there and he'll be fine and safe. Well, it means the world to me because I know that he saves lives and he helps so many people. Being chosen Firefighter of the Year is an honor, sometimes more than once. I do appreciate the fire company electing me or picking me again this, to be Firefighter of the Year. Uh, to me, it's just something that I do, and uh, if they recognize that I do it above and beyond, that's good because they have to keep an eye on me. I, I try not to keep an eye on me. i got too many other things to take care of. A welcome to the newest member, Engine 42, almost timed as an anniversary present. It's outfitted with the very latest in firefighting equipment and technology, including a 2,000 gallon per minute pump and 1,000 feet of 5 inch hose, more than three football fields, to make it from here to there, and then some. With me, I've always found time for things that are important. Um, sometimes it might be me losing a little bit of sleep or maybe uh, a couple less hours with your family. But in the long run, once you've gone out and you've actually helped somebody um, save their house, save their property, or maybe even save their life, uh, the emotional rewards are just so great that uh, losing some time with your family or losing a little sleep is more than worth it. Um, you, you're investing in your community. You're also investing in yourself. Um, you're making yourself a better person by serving the community. My wife has been with me uh, throughout all my years as a, a fireman. She's very supportive. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, she is uh, involved as well, a member of the Ladies Auxiliary. And uh, sh she understands it takes a lot of time and she uh, fully supports me. Right now it, it's pretty strong here in East Windsor. Uh, other municipalities have gone to paid departments. However, uh, Overall in the state we do have a lot of volunteers. It is definitely harder. Uh, we're always looking for new members and I think one of the things that we, we need to do is I think we, we have to be a little more aggressive in our recruiting and letting people we know, know that we need their help. We've had a, a member recently join that's been uh, living in town for 15 years and he's in his mid to upper 40s. Decided he wanted to serve his community, he came down and we, we signed him up and I feel there's probably a lot of people out there. We just have to change the ways that we go about trying to attract members as opposed to waiting for them to come through the door, we got to go out and find them. This is a family. This is an extension of my personal family. I guess I always wanted to do uh, firefighting since I was little. It's kind of a little childhood obsession of mine. And uh, two of my uh, best friends are also in this fire department. And they kind of all joined about the same time. But at the end of the day, you look back at that and it's something to be proud of. And You know, you get to look your kids in the eye and you see the way they look up to you. So. You know, and hopefully, you know, I do a good job and make my dad proud. So that's their story in their own words. Just a little bit of the first 40 years. Stay tuned for the next 40. I'm Dick Cunningham. And on behalf of a grateful township, we say thank you for always being there. And speaking of always being there, Company One, congratulations on 40 years of service. You've always been a brother and a sister to us on, on uh, both sides of us. We want to thank you for all the help that you've given us and I wish you another great 40 years. Good luck. East Windsor Volunteer Fire Company number one, congratulations on a milestone of 40 years providing volunteer service to East Windsor Township. It's been a pleasure working with you guys and I hope to continue working with you in the future. On behalf of the Heights Sound Engine Company Number One, I'd like to congratulate the East Windsor Volunteer Fire Company Number One of 40 years of dedicated service to the residents of East Windsor Township. Congratulations, Station 42, on 40 years from all of us at East Windsor Rescue Squad District One. On behalf of the members of East Windsor Rescue Squad District Two, I'd like to congratulate Station 42 on 40 years of serving this wonderful community. Keep up the great work. 
Good evening. On behalf of the men and women of the East Windsor Township Police Department, I'd like to take this opportunity to offer our congratulations to the members of East Windsor Volunteer Fire Company 1 on their 40th anniversary. Uh, congratulations. And it's also a great opportunity to take a moment to thank all of you for 40 years of dedicated service uh, to the interest of public safety here in East Windsor. Congratulations and thank you. It's uh, my great honor to wish to East Windsor Fire Company number one a, a tremendous congratulations on your 40th anniversary. Uh, your service uh, to East Windsor Township has been remarkable, has been deeply appreciated uh, and invaluable uh, to all of us uh, and uh, all of our residents. Uh, from the bottom of our hearts, uh, thank you so much.